right, hello everyone, and welcome to Eve Basics, episode 21. I'm starting a new series called Get Your Ship Together, and uh, the first uh, thing we're going to cover in this new series is this little beauty of a ship called the Sinesis. Now, we're not going to cover every aspect of it, I'm just going to propose one specific use for it. Um, I was trying to figure out a ship that would be alpha-friendly, really good for running anomalies in high sec. Um, the idea being you want to just run them as fast as you can, warp to the next one, run it, warp, 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 and build up um, a lot of anomaly running. The two types of anomalies that we're going to be focusing on running are hideaways and uh, refuges. These are serpentous ones. I'm sure there are analogous ones in other sections of space. But let's talk about the Sinesis as far as an anomaly runner. Uh, what are the pros and cons of this? The pros are... Uh, you can fly this no matter what. The only requirements to fly a Sinesis is Spaceship Command 1, and then you can hop in this and you're as good as every other Sinesis pilot, at least as far as the bonuses go. Because um, this ship only has roll bonuses. Um, every player in the game has the same bonuses no matter what their skills are. You don't have to have Galente Cruiser maxed out or, you know, whatever um, in order to have these roll bonuses. It's good with everything. It's good with energy turrets, small hybrid turrets, small projectile turrets, light missiles, rockets, drones. It's real good with drones. Um, and then it even's got a little bit of scanner strength on there. Um, and that's just, that's it. That's the ship, right? And um, so I figure no matter what sector of space you're flying around in, um, you can fly a Sinesis and do just about as good as everybody else everywhere. And it's alpha friendly. So this is a fit for running um anomalies that escalate into the three of ten ded sites so whatever that is for your sector of space i know galente the best um so the serpentis refuges and the serpentis hideaways are the ones that escalate into the serpentis narcotics warehouse um, and so the idea is as follows so let's go over a bit of the sinesis fit um, so first off i wanted a fit that wasn't super duper expensive so 16 and a half mil is what i ended up uh, this thing costs about that. I built it for 18.5 in Dodixie because it's Dodixie. Um, and let's go over the fit. I went with missiles and drones, but basically whatever your best skill up here is, is okay. I went with missiles because um, I, they're better than projectiles for me and they have a switchable damage type. Um, so if I do end up taking this thing wherever, I'm always ready because I have the thermal missiles and the EM missiles and the explosive missiles and the kinetic missiles. I can fit whatever missile I need to kill whatever little anomaly dwellers I, I happen across. Um, and so I went with the compact versions of these. Now you'll notice that pretty much everything on this fit is a compact version because if you don't compact everything, it's going to be very tough to fit this thing uh, the way that I, I think is, is a good idea. So I tried to walk the line between price and fit. Um, so the only thing, one of the only things that isn't compact is the medium shield extenders on here. The compact version of these are three, four million a pop. And so I went with the tech one version to keep it um, as alpha friendly as possible. I don't know if they can use the tech two uh, shield extenders. Um, I guess, well, there's not a little omega symbol up here, so I'm assuming they can. But even so, you know, if you don't have the requirements for it, um, the, te the tech ones are, are just fine on here. Usually I don't touch Tech 1 modules uh, with a 30-foot stick, but in this case, I think we're going to make an exception. So I've got the, my missile launchers, but you can fill this with three of whatever your little heart desires, um, so long as it's got a decent range. So the missiles that launch out of here, um, they launch at 27 kilometers. So, you know, you want to be able to hit out a decent amount, so you spend less time flying around, because as it turns out, the Sinesis is incredibly sluggish. And so you don't want to spend a lot of time slow boating around all over the place. Uh, you want to be able to hit a decent amount. The drones help with that, but these help as well. Um, and then you've got your compact multi-spectrum shield hardener. And with all of this running, you're still cap stable if you have good cap skills. If you don't have amazing cap skills, that's fine because you just you just keep your hardener on and you don't worry as much about your afterburner. So you're, even with low cap skills, you're still going to probably be stable with just this running. Um, so it's a nice ship for that. Um, so we've got compact afterburner, two of these medium shield extenders to boost our hit points, which also helps our passive regen. I'll get to that in a second. And then a compact multi-spectrum shield hardener here. Okay, we've got compact drone damage amp, 
uh, nanofiber internal structure of one. This helps us go a little faster, and we sack uh, structure hit points for it. And if something gets through our shields and into structure and armor, we're in trouble anyways, so you should be warping out before that happens if you can. So it's not a big loss of the structure for um, another, what, 50-ish meters per second. That's pretty decent because we don't want to be slow. Um, then the Mark I Compact Power Shield Relay, which boosts your passive shield regen, a nice 5 HP a second. And this is an average, so uh, I can't remember the exact math on this, but at 25% shields, this doubles. I think you have 250% um, regen uh, at your peak. So this would be more like 50 hit points a second and when you're at down at 25% shields. I'll explain that in another video. It's Shield regen is hard. Uh, damage Control 2 is the only Tech 2 module that's on here because it's good. You could... Um, if you need to save fitting space, you can go down to the compact version of the damage control. It's more expensive. Um, the damage control 2 is only about 400,000. And the compact version, I think, is around 2 million or so. Um, so, you know, this saves a little bit of cost if you can fit it. Like I said, the, the fit's going to be tight on here. And two small core defense field purgers. That helps with your passive regen. And then I put another thrusters up here because I wanted another, like... So without the thrusters and the nano, you're looking at 584. That feels so slow to me. But with those two, you're up to 669. It feels good, right? So um, I have pretty high skills on this character, so this your mileage may vary. But in order to fit this, um, the things you're going to want are like max as much CPU management as you can, as much power grid management skill as you can. Uh, weapon upgrades will help you fit things better up here. And advanced weapons upgrades, if alphas can get it, I'm not sure. Um, shield upgrades will also help you fit, is it this guy? Yeah, so shield upgrades will help you, uh, with your power grid usage on your, on your shield extenders. So you want that as well, as high as you can get it. And then energy grid upgrades, which helps you fit, which part of this? I can't even remember anymore. Um, nope, not that, not that, probably this guy. Yeah, so this is energy grid upgrades, helps lower the CPU. Uh, usage of your shield power relay. So those are some skills with fits. Now, if you need to save room with fit, I put a core probe launcher on here for fun. You can get a decent chunk of CPU back just by getting rid of that thing, right? The getting rid of that might be all you need to really fit. I just put it on there because you have a utility high. Nothing else really makes sense uh, up here. So um, just grab some 16 score scanner, score scanner, core scanner probes. And then if you want to scan down some anomalies, maybe they'll turn into turn out to be um, dead sites that you can run. Uh, maybe Serpentis Warehouses or the um, the level the 2 of 10, whatever that is. I haven't taken this into a 4 of 10 yet. I doubt it would do well in there. It's just not beefy enough. Um, and then with the drones, for what drones? It's got 20 megabits, uh, so you can launch 4 lights or 2 mediums. But 4 lights is better uh, in this case. So I put in a couple of different guys here. I like the integrated drones. They're just playing a lot better than the tech ones, and they don't have any really requirements. So like you're going to have drones four to be able to launch four anyway, so you're going to have all the things you need to launch these guys. Um, they do two types of damage. They kind of split their damage between two types. So between the Acolytes and the Warriors, you have all the damage types covered. So, you know, all the resist holes are covered here and all the resist holes are covered by your missiles. So your damage type is completely changeable whenever you need it to be just for that little extra boost of speed through these things. Uh, because I see people running anomalies in like battle cruisers and battleships and I'm just like, why people, why? Because not only do they warp super slow, but they align super slow. And you're one-shotting most of these little frigates in these anomalies anyway. I'm so confused when I watch people do it. Um, there's really no benefit. Um, I don't understand the benefit. If somebody does it and they can explain to me the benefits of running these like high-sec anomalies in a battleship, please let me know in the comments. But I don't... I, it's going to be a hard sell. So, this is the little Senesis or Sinesis, however you want to say it. It's Eve, all the names are subjective. Um, and so uh, this was built specifically to run any high-sec anomalies, mostly the ones that escalate into three of 10 dead sites. So I took this out earlier um, to test it for the video to make sure it could do what I said it could do. And I warped two systems away from Dodixie and found a um, Serpentis hideaway. And I ran it 
it pretty much one shot everything that was in there between the drones and the missiles everything just melted away and it actually escalated the odds of that are insanely low and then i took it into the three of ten serpentis narcotics warehouse uh, about six systems away and it wasn't even a low sec ex escalation which you should never ever go into those those are just excuses to die so it was a high sec escalation even and i went in and did it and this ship was able to do it and i hauled out a good 128 million isk now this is super atypical right but this thing that i put together just to, to demo in the video um came back you know a half hour later with 130 mil this is not typical because i took it out again later in the day to see if I could repeat that. And I probably ran, you know, 10 to 15 anomalies and didn't get a single escalation. So, you know, you can't always expect that you're going to come back with that kind of haul. Um, but it's definitely possible. And for 16 and a half mil, like it's already paid for, you know, six more of itself. And I don't think I'll build six more of it, but it's adorbs. I also spent five mil on a skin because skins look cool. Um, so I think that's it for this. Get your ship together. Um, and I think that the Sinesis should be your go-to, um, ship for doing high sec anomalies because of its speed and its ability to be whatever ship you want it to be. Um, if you want to armor tank this thing, fine. If you want to shield tank it, I think that's the best way to go, honestly. Um, but you know, you can run any damage, any weapon system up here. You don't have to be amazing with drones to put these guys in. And the whole thing is alpha friendly as far as I can tell. So why not give the Sinesis a try? On the next episode of Eve Basics, we are going to talk about cap stability. I've been promising this for a little while, and I'm going to throw my two cents in about cap stability. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.